Hi, I am Nicolas Goni, research scientist at ASTI, and I will present you this analysis of skipjack tuna movements based on conventional tag data. This work was done in the framework of the CSEF consortium, and it has two goals. Uh, first, uh, describing the overall movement patterns of skipjack tunas in the Atlantic based on conventional tag data and uh, applying a uh, tag attrition model to both historical and AOTTP conventional tag and recovery data. So let's have first a look at the respective spatial distributions of the historical and AOTTP releases. Uh, we can notice uh, two regions that were historically intensively tagged but less intensively during the recent period, the Northwest Atlantic and the Gulf of Guinea. On the other hand, uh, the AOTTP enabled tagging in Azores, north from Cabo Verde, uh, in the Sierra Leone Rise and Sierra Leone Basin, also St. Helena and Brazil. You also notice different colors in the tagging locations. These colors actually correspond to 29 different areas that were defined according to the respective tagging and recovery location, but also period of tagging, conditions of tagging, and these areas will be used uh, to describe the, the movements of tunas. Regarding the recoveries, uh, we can also see that similarly the Northwest Atlantic and Gulf of Guinea don't have as many uh, recoveries in the recent years versus historical period, but uh, there are more recoveries in the recent period uh, in Brazil, in St. Helena and in West Africa. So let's see now how the skipjack tunas have been moving across these areas. On this table, we summarized uh, for each tagged area the percentage of tunas that were recovered in each of them after filtering for uh, short-term recoveries. Uh, so the rows are the areas where the skipjacks were tagged and the columns are the areas where they were recovered. And we can observe uh, different groups that show similarities and, and connections. Uh, first one, the Brazilian areas, uh, although quite, uh, quite a few in this, uh, in this historical period. Then the areas within the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, the Central Atlantic area that is more related to the Gulf of Guinea in this case, although with some input from the Sierra Leone Rice area. Uh, and then uh, Western African areas from Sierra Leone to Mauritania, although we can notice a high level of residence in each of them from 63 to 89, uh, uh, sorry, to 96% of residency. Uh, and uh, finally, Canary Islands and Madeira that also connect together. Other areas had a low number of recoveries and all seemingly resident. They were the Azores and the areas in the Northwest Atlantic. Uh, so based on uh, these observed connections, we grouped these areas into five broader regions for a tag attrition model. Uh, Brazil, uh, the Gulf of Guinea, uh, West Africa, Canary Islands together with Madeira, and we added Azores, although with no movement involved in this case. And uh, we follow the similar approach for the data of the recent period, of the AOTTP period, and we observed uh, similar connections. Uh, the Brazilian areas, who are um, a bit more in this case, and who also show uh, important uh, level of, of residence. Uh, again, we notice the Gulf of Guinea and uh, again, uh, West African areas, but with lower rate of viscosity globally uh, compared to the, to the historical period. Seems like the, the tunas have been moving a bit more uh, recently. Um, and again, uh, Canary Islands together with, uh, with Madeira. Uh, and uh, we uh, have here the Central Atlantic um, in which uh, skipjack from many areas show up. So it's not as clearly connected to the Gulf of Guinea as it appeared to be in the historical period. Uh, and also we have the, the Azores uh, from where the fish has, have been spreading to many areas. Um, 
most of them actually to the uh, to the West African uh, cluster. So likewise, we grouped this. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention Saint Helena. Uh, a few recoveries, um, but uh, a high level of residency, and a few ones who migrated to uh, to the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, so. Uh, based on these uh, on these connections, we grouped these areas into six regions. They are basically the same ones, uh, plus uh, Saint Helena that was not present in the historical period. But uh, here we chose to not uh, include the Central Atlantic uh, for two reasons. Um, first is that um, no, it doesn't connect clearly to one group as it was connecting to the Gulf of Guinea in historical data. And also it could neither stand uh, on its own as a separate region because no tagging was done there that we only have recoveries data and the model would have uh, convergence issues if using, uh, using such a region uh, by itself. So this part was uh, just not considered in the in the model. Then regarding the um, the parameters used for this model, they were actually the same as defined in previous works by Jean-Pierre Allier and by Daniel uh, regarding growth, regarding the age groups, uh, tag shedding and natural mortality. And regarding the reporting rate, uh, we set an arbitrary value of 0 0.9 for all regions and fleets. So uh, what does this model say? Uh, for the historical period, we have no significant transoceanic movement. It's zero from west to east, and it is less than 1% from east to west. And uh, other uh, movement rates uh, between regions in, in the East Atlantic, they range for, from 1.5% uh, to 4%. Uh, and then for the recent period, uh, likewise, we see no significant transoceanic movements either, uh, very, very low percentages, and other movement rates between regions in the Eastern uh, Atlantic, uh, they range um, mostly under 4%, with two exceptions, uh, movements from the Gulf of Guinea and from Azores to West African region. In the case of Azores, it is a, new, a newly, newly tagged uh, region uh, where we have no historical reference. And instead of a separate region, we might consider it as belonging to the same group as, to the, as the West African region. But for that, we would need uh, further data, hence uh, further tagging in that uh, area to, to confirm it. And regarding the migration from the Gulf of Guinea to West Africa, it actually involves the Sierra Leone Basin and Sierra Leone Rice, so the southern part of this West African region as we defined it. And uh, in these areas, uh, we had little data uh, available historically, and uh, possibly they could be considered as a transition region between the Gulf of Guinea and, and West Africa. Uh, and regarding the fishing mortality estimates, uh, they are not surprising. They are low in Brazil, in Azores and St. Helena, and they are the highest in West Africa, where the most intense effort uh, actually happens in Mauritania during summer months. So uh, it appears to be around uh, half of this level in the Gulf of Guinea, where no um, similar concentrations um, as the Mauritania ones uh, are taking place. And finally, we wanted to assess the model sensitivity to input data. So for that, we did the jackknife resampling, making separate runs of the model after removing in each run, uh, taking data from one of the initial areas. And this helped us identify that some parameters based on little data uh, were particularly sensitive to the removal of one region, uh, for example, migration rates to Azores region and the movements between St. Helena and the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, in other cases, uh, we notice that the removal of one initial area leads to a different set of parameter estimates. 
Uh, it's, for example, the case of uh, Mauritania, that we have Mauritania and Senegal, actually. Uh, when we remove them, uh, it influences pretty much all the parameters implying the West African regions. Um, and it's actually not surprising because 31% of the skipjack tunas tagged and recovered during the AOTTP were actually tagged in Mauritania and Senegal waters. And regarding the two other ones uh, who also um, create such, uh, such a, a different adjustment of the model when we remove them, uh, so the Eastern Gulf of Guinea and Madeira, um, they actually represent respectively 0.7 and 1.6% of the skipjack tagged and recovered during the AOTTP. But despite of that, we notice that the removal leads to a different convergence of the, of the model uh, and pretty much all the, the parameters uh, have, uh, have significantly different uh, estimates. And interestingly, uh, these areas also represent the eastern and northern ends of the quantitatively most important region uh, in this model, if we consider as a continuum between Gulf of Guinea, West Africa, Canary Islands and Madeira. Uh, so to conclude, the main result uh, of this work is that it does not suggest any change to the stock assessment uh, units uh, used so far. There is no significant connectivity uh, showed in the recent years between the Eastern and Western Atlantic, despite tagging in farther open ocean uh, during the AOTTP. Uh, the main uh, uncertainty uh, is still the lack of data from the northwest quarter of the Atlantic, but it's not something new. It was already the, an issue in, uh, in older periods, and this area is quite uh, structurally uh, difficult to tag and also to get recoveries from. Uh, and uh, finally, considering potential future tagging activities, it would be interesting to continue tagging in the eastern Gulf of Guinea and in Madeira um, because the, the model estimates are, seem to be quite sensitive to their corresponding uh, input data. And also in Azores and St. Helena that are newly tagged areas and for which uh, more years of data would be required. Thank you for your attention.